Hi guys! In this video I'm going to show you how to create these, in my opinion, cool looking procedural generated low poly planets. There are already a few great videos on procedural planet generation out there and if you are looking for a more refined look, I'd highly suggest the series by Sebastian Lake. I'll put a link to it in the description box. However, if you are seeking a rather stylized look, you should stick with me. Of course, as always, we are going to start with a base class, which will be our mesh triangle. This name might sound familiar to you, as I have used that for my mesh cutting as well. Here, this class will consist of a list of the vertices indices that build our triangle points, as well as the UVs, the neighbors and the color, because we are later coloring our planet per mesh triangle. We are also going to need a constructor for it and a function that will allow us to check if our mesh triangle is neighboring another one, which we are doing by checking if they share more than one vertex. Lastly, we need a function that will allow us to update the neighbors by replacing an old one with a new one. This is necessary as we are going to add new vertices and therefore also new mesh triangles to our mesh when we are extruding our continents and mountains. For our planet generator class, we need to define a few variables on the top. These will later be used to tweak the appearance of our planet and should be relatively self-explanatory. This class will have a generate planet function in which we are first making sure that we have everything in order to render a mesh. In here, we are also calling generate ecosphere, which looks like this. An ecosphere is the perfect base for our planet, as it is built of evenly distributed triangles. And here is what our ecosphere would look like if we were to leave it like that. That doesn't really look like any planet I have ever seen, so we need to increase our triangle count to make the sphere appear more rounded, which is what we are doing by calling our subdivide function. In there, we are iterating over a set amount of ecosphere subdivisions. For each of them, we are looping over every single mesh triangle and divide it evenly by getting the middle points between the triangle's vertices, which allows us to add four new mesh triangles for each initial triangle. Now, if we increase our ecosphere subdivision value in the editor, we can see how nice and rounded our sphere will become. But of course, this doesn't make a very convincing planet yet, so we should tackle extruding some continents next. In order to do that, we need to create another base class that will allow us to keep a few mesh triangles in a hash set. This is our triangle hash set class. In there, we will need a constructor and an iteration index that is set by default to negative 1. That will allow us to easily identify if this hash set is containing initial mesh triangles or ones that we added at a later point in time. We will also have a function that allows us to create a hash set of borders, which are basically the edge that runs around our continents, and one that returns a list of vertices indices where duplicates are removed. In order to create continents, we need a new triangle hash set that will hold all mesh triangles that belong to said continents. Next, we are iterating over our max amount of continents while each time randomly getting a size for the next one. We are then getting the triangles that are hit by calling the random on its unit sphere with our current continent size as a radius. Once our continent is selected, we are adding it to our continent's triangle hash set using the dot union with function. After our iterations are complete, we are going to extrude this newly generated landmass. This is done very simply by first getting duplicates of all the mesh triangles that are going to be raised using our fill triangles function, and then looping over them adjusting their new height accordingly. After that, your planet should look like this. Not too shabby, but not how we want it just yet. Since no continent is that flat, we want to apply some bumpiness to it. To do that, we add the following snippet at the end of our addContinents function. Here, we are getting a list of all the vertices that are part of our landmass. We are then adding the bumpiness by applying a little factor to our vertices y value. And here's what our planet looks like with some bumpiness applied to it. 
Finally, we should add some mountains. We are doing that in basically exactly the same manner as we have done with our continent, as you can see here. Now we have a pretty cool looking planet, but sadly it is all blue. We want to color our planet per mesh triangle, and we can do that by adding this shader you see here to our material. And then, in our code, for every region, so our ocean, our continents and our mountains, we loop through all the mesh triangles and set our color. I'm using this handy lambda function to find the right one. 